Good morning and welcome back. Today we will continue our discussion on waveguide. Last time I told you how to solve the uh, wave function of the fields, the waves inside the waveguide. We will continue these topics today, starting from energy flow and attenuation in waveguides. Just imagine, we have a waveguide, cylindrical waveguide, rectangular waveguide, up to you. We know EM wave can propagate inside the waveguide. So, from E field or B field, we can calculate pointing vector. And from pointing vector, we can calculate power. Power, energy transfer per unit time. And we can calculate energy density. And later on, we will find that energy density, power, pointing vector, these three, uh, these three quantities are related. Okay, I will show you step by step. Today, uh, mathematics is, some mathematics is actually quite difficult to understand. Especially for the first time. So try to figure out the logic behind the mathematics. Try, to, try your best to understand. Okay, let's discuss the power loss. In the loss list waveguide, what is loss list? between these two words, loss list and lossy. Lossy means the wave propagating in the waveguide energy will loss you, 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 very fast. Lossy waveguide. Loss list waveguide means energy. EM wave can propagate inside the waveguide and almost just a little bit loss, just a little, not too much. For example, from here to here, loss just 0.1%. Okay, if from here to here, loss 10%, then we will say loss. But no clear cut, no clear cut. Okay, no, no clear cut that you are lost, you are lost. No such clear cut. However, if we deal with loss list, we can use the field here and the field here. Uh, we can simplify the calculation a lot. Okay, that's why we prefer starting from loss list waveguide. Loss list waveguide. Just a little loss, not too much. Okay. One meter, maybe one percent, or one kilometer, one percent. Okay, just a little. So we will consider uh, TMO first. Later, I will show you the result for TMO. TMO, transverse magnetic field. More. So magnet just transverse component only. And electric, we have transverse component and easy component. Okay? In the medium, with real, after, and new. Almost all the medium, after, and new are complex. Almost all the medium. But for our convenience, let's just assume these two are real. It depends on material. For advanced dielectric material, such 
such as Teflon, Quartz, such as Diamond, such as uh, advanced dielectric material, such as Alumina, uh, Alumina, Alumina, AL203, Alumina. They are good. The real part, much larger, much larger, okay? uh, maybe much, much larger than the imaginary part. So you can just consider the real part. It's good enough. For dielectric material, yes, mu very close to mu zero. Okay, that's ideal case. So keep this in mind. We have real epsilon and real mu, so in general, omega kz will be real, okay? In general. So this is complex pointing vector. So maybe you should start from here. Let me remind you by writing it down. The complex pointing theorem shows here. Uh, very small, maybe you can check page. Okay, you can check page 14. Here you will find equation 6.134. 6.134. Exactly the same. Complex pointing vectors. Before we use this complex pointing vector, let me let me explain. Say is current density. Say is current density. Uh, and E is electric field. Say dot E something like A, I, E, and then we have volume integration. So A, L, cancel, L times E, like I dot V. So it's power, dimension is power. Complex pointing vector, dimension is power. Look at this case. This is energy density. Energy density times the volume becomes energy. Energy times frequency, just like divided by time. So once again, power. Power, power. So pointing vector is power per area, per unit area. So integrate the surface becomes power. So S, the dimension of X is power per unit area. Okay, that's pointing vector. Okay, let's start from here. This complex pointing vector. Uh, in terms of phaser, keep this in mind, in terms of phaser, 1 over 2 e cross h star. If you forgot how to derive, check chapter 6, 6.7 or 6.8, chapter 6, okay. And then, let's e, we have e, we have transverse component and easy component, okay, just write it down. And transverse T can be, is related to transverse E. So we can write into this form, just substitute, substitute here. And what's next? Next one is transverse cross EZ cross transverse T. So we got this one. Because EZ and this one is perpendicular. Perpendicular to each other. So this triple product can be simplified into this one. Okay? A cross B cross C. But 
you can use the property. And here, easy, easy, cross, E transverse. And we got one terms only. Okay? Here, we got one term. Write down becomes here. Uh, pointy vector, E T. We know transverse T can be calculated from E Z. Okay, from the previous result. We just write it down only. Easy. So we have easy, easy. And this one in terms of easy. Okay? <clears throat> what happened to this minus sign? Should be, we should have a minus sign. But remember, ET is related to EZ. You can check your lecture note. What is the relation between ET and EZ for TMO? Integration. 
perform the surface integration. What is the surface integration? What is the surface? Cross-sectional surface. Cross-sectional surface. So keep this in mind. A is the cross-sectional cross surface. In this case, that's the cross-sectional surface. Integrate these regions. Integrate these regions. Okay? Integrate this surface. That's the cross-sectional. Cross-section. Okay? So we will perform the integration. Just write it down. So later on, we will find these two terms. These two terms can be right into here and here. What's next? How to calculate this one? How to calculate this one? Okay. Let me introduce our old friend. Green first identity. Green's first identity. Green's first identity tells us that we have these simple relations. Okay, actually it's starting from divergence theorem. If you remember, divergence something and then from bottom integration change to surface integration in cross the surface. This is a shorthand notation just to indicate it's perpendicular to the surface. So it's a surface integration. So you can imagine actually this one diverging something. Something is phi gradient per sign. Divergence phi gradient per sign give us phi gradient per sign surface integration normal to the surface. Okay. How to do that? We find what is the find the Poseidon. Check the previous page. Maybe we have gradient something, a gradient something, two terms. So probably we we will use gradient something, gradient something. Okay. So we probably will use these properties. These properties. Okay. So we can simply assume phi and psi to be easy and easy complex conjugate and easy later on. Okay. Let's consider the simplest case. This is the waveguide, cylindrical waveguide. And we consider, just imagine, the cross section is exactly the same. Just imagine, OK? The cross section is exactly the same. So we have a, just consider a very small Sickness. Here we assume infinitesimal, infinitesimal, extremely small, and the cross sectional area, surface area here, cross sectional, A. Okay? The surface is extremely small. So you can imagine this part is very, very small, probably zero. Okay. I should write something here that's optional for students who work very hard. Okay, that's optional, but you just get the point. Okay, so volume integration, we have delta Z, very small, and cross section cross-section, okay? And delta Z, very small. So we have delta Z is the thickness, very small. And we have L is in cross the surface. In cross the surface. Cross the surface. And this is, uh, looks like a loop, okay? 
And what, what else? This service we have here. And we have this face, this face, two face, okay? However, the surface integrals on the two ends of the slab will vanish because very close. They should be very close to each other because we make this assumption. Input and output should be along the same, okay? We make this assumption, not, not this. So we can simply skip these terms. So we got these terms, delta z divided by delta z. So we can simplify the uh, uh, Green's first identity. The problem is, this is the Laplacian three-dimensional. But what happened here becomes two-dimensional. What happened? It should be three-dimensional, but what happened? It becomes two-dimensional. <laughs> Who can answer me? What happened? The first one is we should use phaser. So actually, it's the nature of minus i omega t has been factored out. Okay. That's for complex pointing vector. We vector out this potential minus i omega t. And we use separa with separation of variable again. And its potential ikz has been separate from the transverse coordinates. You can check. Okay, you can check page four. I mean page four being here. Page four. Page four, you can see here. We use a separation of variables, separate them. Okay, so in this case, EZ uh, G dependent has been factored out. Oh, we got the Time dependent vector R and easy becomes function of x and y, transverse components only. Therefore, no z component, so we can speak, uh, skip the z component. Okay, a little bit complicated. If you don't understand, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay, now, now we can simplify into this one. And next step is substitute EZ, complex conjugate, and EZ here. So we got one thing. Because on the surface, on the circumference, circumference of this conductor, Easy should be zero because of the boundary condition. Boundary condition tells us easy should be zero. So no contribution from this term. Once again, happy day. So we actually you can imagine this is very small, very small. So contribution from here should be small. Therefore, we have two terms, one here, the other is here. We have two terms. Okay? So our purpose is quite clear. We want to change the integration form from here to here. Okay? From this term to here. Okay? Because second is very small, infinitesimal small, and lost this. Therefore, we don't have to worry about energy loss. We don't have to worry about energy loss. Therefore, contribution from this one should be zero. Or maybe close to zero. So we have left hand side, right hand side, a minus sign. And we like this one because after separation of variable, it tells us minus gamma squared E Z. Okay? 
Laplacian tell us this one because of equation 14. Gamma is determined by the cross section. Determined by the cross section. Actually, gamma squared is quantized. It's determined by the cross section. But this kind of cross section, gamma squared, actually has infinite number. It's just like eigenvalue. You have infinite number of eigenvalues, like in this case. So gamma squared is actually quantized. OK? So from, we can change the integration from, from here to here. I use blue color here, but it looks like black. Okay. In the computer, it's blue, but here, it's black, right? Okay, so I want to emphasize, uh, if you do not have time, or you are very busy, you have to play your, uh, play your cell phone, you have to spend, play a game or something, you can skip this part, just skip it. How to calculate this one? We use uh, Green's first identity, and you can obtain this one. You will obtain this one. And we from this one and change to this one. That's for TM mode. TMO. Dimension is power. Power. After surface integration, pointing vector surface integration. So, power is always real. Always real. Power is energy per unit time. It should be always real. No imaginary energy, no such energy. So power should be always real, no exception. Yeah. Power should be always real, but pointing vector is complex. We prefer to use complex notation. Okay, so the relation between power and pointing vector, you should take the real part you should take the real part here. Keep this in mind. And you should perform the surface integration. Okay, two step. Complex, take the real part, and surface integration. And surface integration is cross-sectional surface. Uh, we have many terms. This is the cross-sectional surface. And this is the surface of the side wall. Side wall. Cross sectional surface. And this is the side wall. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, so we know gamma, omega, and kz has simple relation. And gamma is actually determined by the cross section. Okay, so gamma helps us to determine the cutoff frequency. That is the cutoff frequency means the omega at kz equals zero. Omega at kz equals zero. So tell us the minima frequency. Below this frequency, kz will become complex. Above this frequency, kz looks like real. Kz will be real. Below this one become exponential decay and exponential growing. Okay? So Kz real. That, that means wave can propagate inside. Kz imaginary. That means wave cannot propagate. Exponential decaying wave and exponential growing wave. 
Bolts. Bolts. Depends on the length. Okay? So actually, Kv can be determined from here. Keep this in mind. Gamma is eigenvalue. It has been quantized. Okay, so we can rewrite into square root mu epsilon times omega 1 minus omega c squared, omega squared, 1 over 2. Okay, and we can substitute, substituting this equation 19 and 30, 39 and 38 to 37. And we got these relations. So calculate that the power is easy, just here. Similarly, for TE mode, and for real epsilon and real mu omega kz, we obtain another equations. This time, we similar, quite similar, and we got to take the real part, and eventually we got this one. That's for TE mode. Let's compare this one and this one. The integral, e v squared, that's for T m mod. For T e mod, it's x g squared. Okay? This part, the same. This part, the same. And this part, omega, omega, kind is the same. This one, epsilon over mu. This mu over epsilon. So the major difference is epsilon over mu, mu over, mu over epsilon. Okay. Actually, epsilon over mu times this one, mu over epsilon times this one, they are equivalent. Okay. So, uh, that's the major difference here and here, here and here. Okay. So this time, if you have a chance to calculate PM, just keep in your mind, PM are real. PM is the power, power, so it should be real. And PM, we will perform the integration of pointing vector for a cross-section, cross-section, okay? This cross-section, this cross-section, this cross-section, this cross-section. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> people will say, if we look from here, let's top view some shit. If we look from here, let's side view. If we look from here, let's cross sectional view. Okay. Some shit, uh, some shit, some shit, some shit, and some shit, and some shit, and some Okay. So cross sectional view. Cross sectional view, we don't have to say, we don't so, some, okay. So, what happened with omega equal to omega c? Pardon? Uh, what happened with omega equal to omega c? c omega c means the cutoff frequency, the minimum frequency for the, the propagating wave. So, if that omega equal to omega c, the PTM goes to zero? Yes. Uh, what happened here? What the, what the physical implication? That's cut off, which means the wave cannot propagate. Therefore, no energy transfer. And wave cannot propagate inside. What below this frequency, below this frequency, wave just exponential decay. If we if we have a infinitely long, below this frequency, wave is exponential decay. Above this frequency, wave can propagate inside. Exactly equals to omega. Omega equals to omega c. Zero, no energy transfer. Yeah, no energy transfer at all. Good point. Power should be.
be real. Okay. Okay, so we got energy in the lost least waveguide. We got this equation. Now let's consider a little loss, a little, just a little. L-E-S-S, very soft. Okay, almost no loss, but still have a little. Let's consider a complex pointing vector again. And keep this in mind, energy density for complex pointing vector. E dot D. So we got this one, and what we got M, we got this one. That's complex pointing vector. If you want to take the pointing vector, you should take the real part. Real part, real part. Okay. And then we will apply this equation to a section of a low space waveguide. Mu epsilon are real and the wall conductivity is perfect. Okay, that's ideal assumption. Okay, but this time we will calculate everything. Sigma equals zero inside the waveguide, just like this case. No conductivity, no conductivity. Because nothing inside, no conductor inside, just dielectric or air or vacuum. So inside the volume, zero. Therefore, C will be zero. Surface current, uh, volume current density will be zero because C proportional to sigma E, right? A sigma equals zero, so C equals zero, okay? Of course, no current inside, no current. So this turns zero, good news. And ET on the side wall, this term, we have, let's consider ET transverse electric field on the side wall, transverse electric field on the side wall. So they will be perpendicular to an Perpendicular, N is here. And ET is the transverse. Uh, for example, this turns equals zero on the side wall. Okay, that's the transverse component. EX and EY on the side wall should be zero. So this turn should be zero. And mu epsilon, we assume they are real. So, we got this one. ET and HT are in phase. Not always. Not always. However, for propagating wave, they are in phase. For standing wave, they are out of phase. For standing wave. For some kind of lossy material, they will have some phase delay. Phase delay can explain the energy loss. Okay. So, <coughs> ET cross HT star is real because they are in phase. Exponential I phi times exponential minus, uh, exponential minus I phi cancel. Therefore, this one should be real. So X is real on both end. This end, this end. Okay, this end, this end. X should be real. Therefore, this integration will give us the real quantity. Okay, so take the real part. We got this one equals zero. No net power into or out to the volume. So this two equals this two equals and all equals and take the real part. So this one we have an I here. I here. So they will 
this one and this one in face, of course. This one and this one in face, but the compress conjugate. So that must be real in general. Okay? In general, so these two should be real. Real quantity times imaginary. So for the imaginary part, for the real part, we can skip this one. Just this one, this one. However, this one is zero. So eventually we got this one. No net power into or out of value. In this case, imaginary, imaginary tell us that this is real, this is real. So imaginary tell us this equation. Omega E equals omega M. For EM wave, propagating wave, E field will be equals to B field. For standing wave, it's different. Okay, so what is the standing wave? Resonance wave, cavity. For example, a swing. Potential energy highest, kinetic energy highest, potential energy, kinetic energy, right? E, uh, potential, uh, kinetic potential, kinetic, they always change. Okay, but the, the total energy should be a constant. And for a KFT, we have, I will show you next time. Cross this end, cross this end, we have a EM wave stored inside. And once again, total energy should be the same, but electric field will, electric energy will convert to magnetic energy, and magnetic energy will convert to electric energy, just like LOC resonator. LO inductor, C capacitor. LO can store magnetic energy. C can store electric energy. So let's just, okay. So in that case, for the resonator, yes, they are the same, but uh, in this case, B field's energy equals E field energy. Can we find some exception that these two are not equals? Yeah, we can do that. We can find some special case. These two are not equals to each other. Yeah, that's possible. That's possible. Okay, so let's calculate the energy density. For TMO, once again, TMO, Let's calculate the field energy per unit length. Why we calculate energy density? Actually, it's uh, energy per unit length, not per unit volume. We have performed the integration. So we perform, just consider a unit length like this one here. And we integrate the cross section. So we got energy density energy per unit length. Not exactly, this is energy density, but after surface integration, energy density, energy density, after surface integration, cross-sectional area give us energy per unit length. Okay? We use a notation called U, not W. Okay? So, now we know in this case, for a traveling wave, omega E and omega M are the same, so we just calculate one term. Okay, so from here, just write everything down, the same, the same integration. Eventually, we got this one again, and we can rewrite into this form. Into this form, okay? So, similarly, for TEVO, we got the same result, SC. You can check PTM and UTM. You will find that PTM, 
power. Uh, energy per unit length. Power is energy per unit time. Energy per unit time. Energy per unit length. Divided becomes length per unit time. That's velocity, right? The dimension is velocity. So, divided these two terms, we got this one. This one. This one means good velocity. That means, just consider energy per unit length. Move at a good velocity. So you've got energy per unit time. That means this one times screw velocity, we've got this one. Okay, so energy density, power per unit time, energy per unit length, and pointing vector. These terms are correlated. And we got more information. That means Uh, have a closer look. It's blue. Slightly different in color. This blue. Kz over omega. But remember, we have phase velocity. Phase velocity here. Kz. Uh, yeah, phase velocity. So phase velocity times the group velocity just equals to 1 over nu epsilon. So that's the phase velocity. Phase velocity times the group velocity equals to 1 over nu epsilon. Okay, if nothing inside or vacuum, then mu equals mu zero, epsilon equals epsilon zero. So for vacuum, equal the speed of light. And group velocity is the energy transfer velocity. It's related to energy velocity is related to signal velocity. Okay, so it should be lower than the speed of light. However, phase velocity can be faster than the speed of light. Okay, from this relation, you know, one lower, the other greater. Why phase velocity inside a waveguide is greater than the speed of light? Why? Actually, you can imagine, looks like here, phase velocity depends on Kz. So, looks like, looks like we have a wave in this direction. Oh, just imagine, we have a step. If we, let me show you, my two hands. Okay, if, just imagine, that's the wavelength. And wavelengths here, uh, okay, wavelengths propagate, that's the group velocity, always in phase. But in terms of phase velocity, here is here. But in terms of here, you can, if I change the direction, looks like here, and another one point here. So they travel much faster than the group velocity. Okay? Something like that. Separation is still the same. See? But from the viewpoint of the face, that's the best one. I cannot extend it anymore. Yeah. Okay? So face velocity looks like travel much, much, much faster than the group velocity. But it cannot carry information. 
It cannot carry energy. It just fades velocity. Just fades. So many people try to demonstrate that. Many people try to show that phase velocity can be faster than the speed of light. Actually, nonsense. Everybody know phase velocity is greater than the speed of light. No big deal. Okay? But some people try to demonstrate phase velocity can carry signal. Oh, in that case, I think Einstein will be very surprised to know that. Right now, no exception. Right now. Because once phase velocity can carry information, we, uh, the causality might be, might be broken. <laughs> might be, yeah, the cause, it will violate the causality. In Okay, that's just a very interesting world. Causality is very important. Right now, we, uh, we are human beings. Maybe some god can break the limitation of the causality. But not Earth, obviously. OK. OK, OK. Let me show you more information. OK. Attenuation in the waveguides due to ohmic loss. In the previous slide, we just consider no loss. And, and here, we allow a little loss. So, in that case, conductivity is not perfect. Not perfect. Conductivity is not infinite, but finite. For copper, aluminum, that conductivity is finite. So KZ is no longer real, but at two terms, KZ plus alpha plus IB, KZ becomes imaginary, a complex, complex. Alpha is a little mod modification. So alpha is a little modification of the waveguide radius because the wave can slightly penetrate into the conductor. So it looks like the waveguide is slightly larger, slightly larger in this case. So waveguide is slightly larger. The cutoff frequency will be slightly lower. So KZ will be increased a little bit because of these terms, because of skin depth. Beta, beta means power dissipation on the side wall. That means this is, not, this is made of copper, uh, aluminum. This is made of stainless steel. Finite conductivity. We will have ohmic loss. Ohmic loss. Yeah, ohmic loss. So alpha means uh, due to modification of uh, the skin depth and beta because of the dissipation energy loss okay so have a closer look so kz alpha is not a primary interest alpha just change a little bit uh, for this kind of waveguide alpha roughly about one micron. This is 10 meter, one micron, not important at all. However, if this one is one millimeter and alpha is one micron, then it's very important. Okay, so at higher frequency, alpha will become very critical. For lower frequency, you can skip alpha. But the most interesting term is beta. Because we have some new quantity in measuring power. 
how beta are evaluated? Beta is power flow. We can calculate these terms. That's complex pointing vector. And this one should be proportional to exponential ikzz minus exponential ikzz complex conjugate. But kz has real and imaginary. Real part cancel. Imaginary part survive. That's beta. So imaginary part survive. So P equals P0 times exponential minus 2 beta Z. So beta can be determined from the power attenuation rate per unit length. Let's feel attenuation constant. OK. Because it's related to field. So it's field attenuation constant. Later, we will have another one power attenuation constant or energy attenuation constant just just notation so how to calculate this one okay we got this one because we got this one uh, equation 8.15 8.15 we got this one and the a we can separate into two parts we can dz times uh, dz times another one, the other. This one is the a. We have dz times the l. dz times the l. Okay. We change the integration surface. The surface on the side wall. Surface on the side wall. So it's dz. Here, the L here. Okay? That's the the circumference, the area of the circumference. Separate into two parts. So remember K effectively equals N cross H. The surface current K effective can be determined from N cross H. N cross H tells us this one. So we can from calculate this loss from n cross h. Okay. Since the wall loss can be regarded as a small perturbation, small, yes, normally very small, we may use the zero order edge to derive for a perfect conductivity. So here, we still, it's lossy. But we still use original edge. Okay. <clears throat> we still use original edge. Uh, specifically, we calculate the zero order E and H from from uh, the simple relations. And we use zero order EMH to calculate the power and the power loss. Beta is length formed from this equation. The formula for beta for rectangular and cylindrical waveguides are tabulated in many textbooks like Collins, like uh, Posa, uh, many, many famous textbooks. Okay, I am I am very happy to know our new new professor. He will offer a course uh, on microwave physics and microwave physics and applications. Uh, what's his name? Sorry, I don't. Our new new professor, a young professor, very young. He will offer. Microwave physics and application next semester. Okay. I am sorry, I do not have time to. I don't have to offer that course because my credit is uh, is good enough, so I don't have to order, offer the course. Microwave physics and applications. 
But I'm very really happy to know he is willing to offer that course. Because in our department, there are many professors conduct a microwave related a research. Okay. The idea is quite uh, similar to optics or quantum me wave mechanics. Okay, next step. Beta has been calculated by perturbation master. Just change a little bit. Use the zero order value. The master is invalid, invalid. Near the cutoff frequency, at which there is a large perturbation. When, a, uh, when change a lot is not a perturbation. Uh, calculate alpha and beta due to sine wall. We just use the real quantity to calculate. Okay. Second, we will have other type of losses. For example. Right now, we just consider conductor loss. But if we have a feeding material, feeding material inside, complex abstract, complex mu, that's conductor, a dielectric loss or magnetic loss. Okay. So we will have more loss. Let me show you more information. The definition of attenuation constant. In chapter 8 of Jackson, the attenuation of attenuation constant for the waveguide is denoted by, denoted by beta and defined it this way. This is called the field attenuation constant because we multiply on the kz and field is exponential i k z z so multiply on kz just multiply the exponential minus beta z so just the field only that's the field attenuation constant however interestingly in chapter 7 Jackson used another notation. He used alpha. For a uniform medium, alpha means alpha means minus one minus one over P P D Z. So what's the difference? Two. A factor of two. Okay? So alpha is power attenuation constant. Uh, so, power attenuation constant, field attenuation constant, which one you like? Let me show you. Most of the people use this one. They don't use beta, they just use 1 over uh, alpha over 2 for the wave. Okay. Most of the people prefer alpha because alpha and attenuation a are alpha a they are related. So people prefer to use alpha, not beta. Okay, Jackson. Most of the textbook use this notation. And then replace beta as one of alpha over two. That's it. That's it. Okay. So obviously the power attenuation constant is twice the value of the field attenuation constant. Okay. So let me show you two terminals with guide. Waveguide at low frequency is easy. For example, this kind of waveguide can guide a uh, two point roughly about two to four gigahertz. 
2, 2 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz, roughly. About 4 gigahertz, you will excite high order modes. Okay? The fundamental mode is TE11 mode. However, if you increase the frequency, you will excite TE21, TE31, TM01, TE01. Okay, so it's not, uh, the, it will result in more competition. So try to minimize, try to stay in a single mode operation. That's 2 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz, just one mode. Okay, the physics will become much easier. Okay, so this one. If you want to increase the frequency to 20, you will have a smaller waveguide, 10 times smaller. If you want to increase the frequency to 200 gigahertz, what will happen? 100 times smaller, extremely small, right? Extremely small. If you want to increase the frequency to 1,000 terahertz, you will have almost impossible, very small, very small, okay? Extremely small webcam, and you will have more loss because wave cannot penetrate. Uh, high frequency wave cannot penetrate. So ohmic loss will become a serious problem, a very serious problem. Another question is when a frequency becomes higher, wavelengths will become very, very small, and surface roughness will become very critical. So surface roughness, this is not perfect surface. It's if you enlarge, 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 you will see the surface is not uniform, not perfectly uniform. It's up and down, up and down, okay? So surface rough, roughness will cause attenuation a lot. Therefore, for terahertz, it will become very difficult to fabricate a waveguide. So Professor Mittman provided this idea. He used a single wire, single wire to inside, but it's outside, not inside. We prefer to operate, to transmit the energy inside the waveguide. Mittman's idea is outside. So it's a wire wire only, energy propagate outside, not inside. And you just use some optical fibers and then couple the signal to here. And this one will induce some noise, surface current. Surface current will propagate doing, 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 up to here, that's detector. That's the receiver. So he he will just demonstrate that the signal once coupled can propagate in outside the wire, and loss is very small. So he claimed he is the first one to provide a terahertz waveguide. Okay, but the problem is. The laser, doing, 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 doing. from here to here, oh, only 1%. 99% doesn't work. Only 1% from here to here. Okay, the conversion, conversion efficiency is extremely low. Extremely low actually not good at all. But he, why he published paper in Nature? Because he said, 
This kind of wire will be very important in the future because you can insert a wire to your body and you can examine just like endoscope, 内视镜, endoscope, so you can examine. You don't have to cut into it and see the cross-sectional view and you can insert a wire, flexible wire to your body and you can examine everything. It's a dream. 16 years ago, but it's still a dream today. Yeah. But he's... So sometimes I say a good professor is a good salesman. You, you have to sell your idea. You have to persuade all the researchers that your idea is good. Okay. Last one. Last slide. Uh, let me show you. Actually, most of the waveguide, most of the mold is not good for terahertz wave transmission. Uh, but this mold, TE01 mold, is pretty good. TE01 mold is here. 01, 02, 03, 04, 05. But how to excite TE01 mold? Not that easy. Okay, especially for such higher frequency. So we propose uh, S ray microfabrication called LIGA. We use a synchrotron radiation, radiation source to generate S ray. And then we use uh, something like lithography. Lithography. Yeah. Using the S ray to, 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 to fabricate. That's microfabrication. For 200 gigahertz, uh, it's extremely difficult. For 400 gigahertz, the major difficulty is how to measure. For 1 terahertz, the device is very small. Very, very small. Very, very small. So it's, it's very difficult. But we have another idea. Mr. Yao, Dr. Yao, he proposed another idea. He can couple, he can analyze, analyze the model effect. For example, if you want to couple a wave from here to here, from rectangular waveguide to... Sorry, sorry. If you want to convert a wave from rectangular waveguide to cylindrical waveguide, you will have some conversion loss. Okay, some, some will reflect the back. Okay, so how to maximize your conversion efficiency? It's very important. This one, the conversion efficiency is the highest. It's the world record, 97%. Okay. Okay. So, Xinyo proposed this idea. And this is Professor He Qinghua from uh, Charlotte University, Charlotte. We use model analysis and we use a terahertz waveguide, but this waveguide is not made of conductor, it's made of dielectric, multi-layer dielectric. We use a multi-layer dielectric to generate the effect similar to conductor. So multi-layer dielectric, black fiber, uh, layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4. By changing the dielectric constant, we can minimize the reflection. Make sure no reflection at all. So it's a black, black fibers. 
multi-layer. Okay. Okay, I will stop here. We still have five minutes, right? Or oh, three. Good. Any question or comment? Sorry, 
green dot is the base velocity, and red dot, uh, not red, is the group velocity. Last one, wave propagating forward, but group propagating backward. We use a three wave propagating forward, right? However, you will find that actually the wave propagating backward, the group velocity propagating backward. See? Base velocity forward, group velocity backward. So you can you can simply use three wave. You can generate any kind of condition faster than the speed of light, slower than the speed of light, negative velocity, just like this case. Group velocity propagating backward, phase velocity forward. Okay, that's all. Simple, simple demonstration. Okay, I will stop here. Any other questions? If no, let's invite our TA. Amplitude 
equals to da da da. Where z m n the source current density and maybe you write regionals. Um, yeah, just we substitute the substitute the the element into into our equation nine from past past two pages. Okay, then we get the amplitude of T T mod and the T M mod in these two integration. Okay. Then next we have to calculate. Okay. Uh, after some um, hard calculation, uh, here we I I color the component which. Uh, has relation to to our n or n here k m n gamma m n n and uh, for t mod we have three this this here and uh, here so when m n very large than one we can get only left these terms for calculation and the amplitude of T mode is according to this uh, or, or, uh, proportional to N N um, N3 <laughs> Y over Z and for here mod only here, 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 and here. Here for amplitude for here mod is proportional to one over n. Hence, uh, the answer for this question is T is one over n and Z. T n is one over n. For question eight.
question. <coughs> okay, for problem C, discuss the multiplication that occur if the guy instead of rounding off to infinity in both directions is terminated with a perfectly conducting surface at z equal to L. What values of L will maximize the power flow for a fixed current I0? What is the radiation resistance of the pipe? Define the, the ratio of power flow to one half the square of the current at the base of the pipe at the maximum. Okay, placing a perfectly conducting surface at z equal to zero, z equal to L will cause the right moving wave to perfectly reflected at this surface. Okay, so we write down the E field for left moving left, left moving field and the right moving E field. Yeah. And according to the reflect according to the Z equal to L the surface, conducting surface, we have to reflect it. Okay, so the reflecting field is here. And when Z equal to L we have to uh, we have to uh, to satisfy the boundary condition. Our e field should be zero. So when so when z equal to l, this term this term and the distance will equal to zero. These two terms add, add together will be zero. Okay, and for z smaller than zero, we have the totally totally field composed by left moving e field and the reflecting reflecting e field like this. along the loop 
just the the loop. Oh, okay, and the DL equals to R x cosine phi minus y sine phi phi. Okay. Then for the rectangular wave type, the normal slice TMM mod is given by by this. And we we sub we sub sub the well, oh, oh, using the equation twenty we sub the E field M and then get the do 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 the large part uh height.
similarly like, like the problem A, we do the same thing. But here don't here here is nothing particularly nice about this interval. We focus we focus on the lowest E mode, namely TE10. So we just directly using gamma 10 equals to pi over a and including the additional normalization factor of 1 over root 2 we have the amplitude 1 or 1 0 equals to this uh, that, that means this term uh, yes, this term is 0 because n is 0 and just left this term drop down here and gamma and n is pi over a so the pi pi is determinant and the a we say a um, here is 1 over a and here is a, a so it's determinant ok so we got this term and next And nothing the integral is repre uh, representation for the basal function here. So we change this part. We change this integration into basal function. So, okay. And we we expand and we expand the basal function. The expansion of the basal function for R very small than A gives us this then the uh, other B is down okay. so it, it is dependent of the high edge ok so the next, next problem problem C show that the power radiating in either direction in the lowest E mode is this where Z is the wave independence of the TE 1 O mode here assume R very small than A and B the average radiative power is given by this ok so since the power is computed along the Z direction we only need the transverse component, components of the field Where we use orthogonality, Jackson equation 8133, in the last step. For the T1O mode, we substitute in equation 14 to find the lag. Thank you.